It is wonderful to see you. Good to have you tonight as we continue studying God's Word together. What a joy to know that the Lord is working in our hearts, the Lord is speaking to us through His Word, and that encourages me every day and every other time we are gathered in His name. Amen. If you're visiting us for the first time, you're most welcome. This is Calvary Chapel. And this is customarily what we do. We go through the Bible. Uh, some time back, we began Genesis. Now we are in First Kings, uh, chapter 3 today, tonight. So it's quite a journey. We're nearly done with most of the book in the New Testament, actually. Maybe a few, but we're nearly done. So it's a, it's a milestone to know uh, what the, uh, the Bible says and what it's written there and how we ought to apply it to our lives. As Paul told us on Sunday, that he did not shun away declaring the whole counsel of God, the whole of it. And that is what we're going to do. So let's pray again together before we read God's word together. Lord, our God, our King, we thank you for this privilege tonight, gathering in your name, that you would speak to us, that you would uh, encourage us and also cause our ears to uh, be attentive or to decline to you tonight or to be inclined to you as we um, receive your word. We pray that you help our hearts to grasp the truth so that we may properly apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We went through chapter 2 and uh, we saw a bit of uh, the wisdom that uh, God have already um, given to the man or the king Solomon and it is prudent, there's a promise that was given and his father David reminded him also that when uh, you take heed to God's word, you will not lack anyone to sit on the throne of David forever. So the moment that link is cut, you know for sure there will be no people sitting in that throne. And um, it's not, it's not going to be long since... You know, when Solomon is gone and there's a lot of division and all that stuff, until when we come to hear of Christ, the root of David, whose government will be upon his shoulder, he'll be the prince of peace, um, and all that stuff. So let's read together from verses 1 of chapter 3, 1 Kings. Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the people sacrificed at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned in, uh, incense at the high places. So this is uh, one of those exceptions that now is coming in, and this was something that God told them not to do in um, Deuteronomy. God told them not to uh, sacrifice um, like other people, the other nations surrounding them. They used to go to the high places and sacrifice to their gods. And uh, as the Bible is telling us that uh, Solomon, he really loved the Lord, but there's already one thing that he did that was not right. Uh, offering sacrifices in the high places because there was a designated space uh, to do that. 
And at Gibeon, the Lord, uh, let's go back to number four. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that day. That was a lot of meat for people to, to eat. Um, as we said before, when this feast or when they would celebrate any um, offering, whether it's a peace offering or whatever offering they offered to the Lord with animals, it was a time of joy. It was a time when people would come together, they would sing songs and, you know, rejoice together, worshiping the Lord. And, you know, we have been reminded with God's word that that ought to be our attitude when we come to the house of the Lord and we are ready to worship. We are supposed to worship joyfully, offering these sacrifices. I mean, who, who amongst you eat food when they're so gloomy? <laughs> I mean, you, you love the food that you have prepared. Maybe it's beef or pork or gideri or mursik or whatever it may be. The, the, the delicious food that you love, you prepare it, and after you set it on the table, all of a sudden you're sad about it. <laughs> so what are these? <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're not having a pleasantry as you partake of the food that you prepared, you know. So as you do that, as you come to the house of the Lord, remember that it is a joyful thing to do even when you're raising your hands to the Lord, raise it with joy, with affection to the King of Kings for the provision of his son, Jesus Christ, to us. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask, what shall I give you? Friends, I know we know what Solomon asked. <laughs> assume you don't know. It is very hard to assume. But if it were you, God is asking to give you something, what would you have said to God? Leave alone this wisdom. This is, this is Solomon. This is Solomon. Assume it was you and this is not your thought process. What could you have asked the Lord? A few of us would have asked the Lord for a visa to get out of here. <laughs> a few of you would have asked uh, that the Lord would give you a shamba somewhere, like a lot of acres. Uh, you know, you want a ranch for yourself, you want workers, you want all that stuff. Some of you would have asked the Lord for a bigger vehicle, maybe, a Prado or Jeep, whatever it is. Some of you, they're like, God, thank you that you asked. Thank God you asked. Hey, I've been waiting for this man for my lifetime. Where is he? I've been waiting for this woman for my life. I want to get married. And in that God, now that you have asked, this is my ideal wedding. <laughs> We're going to give him the whole list of what we want to happen in our wedding. This is how we're going to walk, you know, a red carpet and, you know, you'll buy the suit even for the preacher who normally don't wear suits. Like, for that day, he will wear a suit. <laughs> we, we have things in our heads that will right away tell God we weren't. Barely, none of us would have asked for what Solomon asked, if we're, if we're being honest, because Christianity is being honest, right? <laughs> it's just like, ah, no, 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 no. In my village, all of my neighbors have permanent houses, except our family. God, you came at the right time. <laughs> we have a lot of things, but God is saying, hey, ask what shall I give you? And Solomon said, 
You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit in his throne as it is this day. Now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go about or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may distinguish or discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge these great people of yours? That is basically where we draw our a title for our teaching tonight. The reward of a hearing heart. The reward of a hearing heart. You know, many times when we think of wisdom, when we talk about wisdom, we, we uh, just think of, you know, applying something or you say something clever and people would ap applaud you for saying those things. But as we see here, he traces the, the success of his father's kingdom to David actually walking in uprightness. Not that he was perfect all the way, but his direction towards fearing God was on point. Ozzy, as we, we, we've always said, it's not about perfection. It is about direction. If you're running towards the wrong direction, you're getting lost quickly. You'd rather come back, follow the ways of the Lord, hear him, and do what he wants you to do. You know, according to Solomon, wisdom does not come from experience, which seems to be almost the universal assumption of people today. But this comes from hearing and absorbing and memorizing what God tells you. And Proverbs is full of commands to memorize its content. If you go to you know, Proverbs 2, chapter, uh, 2 and verses 1, 3 and verses 1, 4 and verses 4, 4, 21, you know, it is encouraging us to heed the word of the Lord. Wisdom is a matter of knowing which voice and whose voice you're listening to. Which voice and whose voice you're listening to. Not any other voice would give you wisdom. It is not every voice. Whether old or young, the same. You can receive wisdom from a very young person or from a very old person. You may not also receive wisdom from an elderly or elderly person or young person. So it depends with the person they listen to, the person they're drawing this wisdom to. So this is what you know, our Bibles uh, would write. But rightly, uh, Solomon say, said, therefore, give your servant a heart that hears you. What a great request to hear from God to receive from God. For if you hear from God, 
all the trouble. This, this is, you're a king of a nation. He says, these people, I cannot even number them. So numerous, but he, he recognized also that I'm just too young to understand a lot of things. I don't know. If I'm left alone in my own wisdom, I'm going to mess it up. What should I do? This is what I pray that you give to me. So wisdom is a matter of knowing which voice and whose words to listen to. It is important to hear. The Bible in, in the book of Hebrews, it says faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not just any other word by the word of God. So pay attention to God's word. Give your servant. A hearing spirit, a hearing heart, to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. Every Christian is supposed to have a basic discernment to know good and evil. If you're born again, washed by the blood, you know, you're heavenly bound, earthly loosed. <laughs> you're born again. You're supposed to know things. Why? Because now you're no longer walking alone. He lives in you. The king of kings lives in you. He resides in your heart. He wants to judge people rightly. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. It pleased the Lord that Solomon wants to hear him. Those who are fathers, mothers, technically parents, it brings you great joy when you know that your sons and daughter are listening to you. It's quite a joy. And if you're doing parenting, you're, it's a joy to know that your labor is not in vain, that they can hear you, that they can comprehend something, that you can send them, they respond well and they do the things you tell them to do. And there's always a reward that comes when people listen to the instruction that they're given. Sometimes your children will not even ask you for something, but because they have been so obedient, they hear you well, well. You're like, I'm going to treat them. I'm going to take them to Rupa. They're going to jump and they're going to get tired. <laughs> they get home, it's just flat out. They're going to sleep. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor has asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourselves understanding to discern justice. Because that is what God likes, justice. He says to us we should do justice and be merciful. Behold, I have done according to your word. See, I have given you a wise and an understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. Think about those words. God speaking to you because you have asked something that is right since the beginning. I mean, how many people ask 
this matter. The God you should give me. You know, they prayed for, for, for wisdom, but God put this guy in a position where, you know, he could have asked for, for riches. He said it. You could have asked for, you know, the life of your enemies because you're surrounded by enemies. Because you have asked this thing, I'm going to give you the, a great understanding that has never been heard of before. People have been wise. People have done things. But none of these people have never been like you. <laughs> For many people, that will be the beginning of pride. To have something that any other person has never heard. And to know that after you, no one else would ever have it. Pride will come upon you like a robber, <laughs> straight. If you can hear him, he can trust you with wealth. If you can hear him, he can trust you with many, many things. He can try to trust you with life, good health, resources, if you can hear him. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you amongst the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes, and my commandment, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Now, I don't want to go over ourselves or ahead of ourselves, but we know, you know, Solomon is not going to live many days like his father. He's going to live like 60 years. But God had promised him a long life. What is going to happen they're gonna be the things that are gonna be, you know, be picked in between. Because the in-between really matters. The in-betweens are the more important things. You know, you know the, the beginning of it is very well. And the end of it, God said, is gonna be glorious. What about the things that happened here? He said, if you obey, if you follow my commandments as your father David, I'm going to add you more life. God is promising him a lot of good things, the things that we would want. Now that he's asked the right things, God is giving me the things, him the things he didn't ask. He didn't ask for wealth. God is giving. He didn't ask for Honor, God is going to do that. He didn't ask for long life. God is doing that because he chose to do things right, especially at this moment. Then Solomon awoke. And indeed, it had been a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered burnt offering, offered peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. It was a joyful thing, you know, to have that conversation with God and to hear what he has for you and to know the direction of the kingdom. Now two women, this is what um, Solomon is famous for and we know the story. Two women who were halots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, Oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house. And I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened 
that the third day after I had given birth, that this woman also gave birth. And we were together. No one was with us in, in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maid servant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is my son and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead child is your son and the living one is my son. You know, there's exchanging words here and there, back and forth. Thus they spoke before the king. You know, it went on and on and on and the king was like, what a, Whatever. The king said, the one say is my son who lives and your son is dead. And the other says, no, but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king. So she yearned with compassion for her son and she said, oh my Lord, give her the living child. By no means kill him. But the other said, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment with the king had rendered and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer what? Justice. This is pretty remarkable. Um, this situation has never been before. It was not there when his father was the king so that he would, you know, pass the judgment and probably Solomon should learn from him but this is happening just after Solomon asked for what? For a heart to hear. Listen, we got a lot of people hearing things, but it's not from God. We have a lot of ministers of the gospel hearing things. Some of them are not from God. But those who hear from God, they render justice that is right. Solomon was there, still very young, and he's wondering, you know what? Well, th this is ridiculous. There's a movie right here <laughs> in the palace. They, these women are exchanging words back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this one woman says, the fact that you have brought a sword, let the child be split in two. Give me a piece of it, and a piece of it give to the other woman. Even before you think of you know, Solomon's wisdom, you begin to see that her direction is not right. Why would you want this child to die? 
Why would you want to take life just because you know for sure that it is yours that died, so munataka mubaki same, right? <laughs> Have you heard people doing that or saying that? No, in that case, what has this wanted to cause? Oh. Children do that. You give this one a uh, piece of candy or cake and, you know, someone eats or someone, whatever happens, and th- this one is crying for this and you're taking it. And like, yeah, don't even give it to us. <laughs> we, we don't want it now. <laughs> and you hear someone saying that, you know, uh-uh, kumbe ni wewe. It's you. And the... The, 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 the king was able to pick that because God spoke to him. In the middle of this situation, God whispered a word in his heart because that is what he prayed for. I want a heart that will listen to you so that I will judge right. You know, even the apostles, when you know, the the Holy Spirit had already promised that they're going to suffer, they're going to be brought before uh, the the elders. The Holy Spirit told uh, Peter and John and the apostles, do not be worried when they bring you before the chief rulers. Jesus knew that it it would happen, but he told them at the very time when you are before them, I will give you what to say. In other words, I will whisper to you what will be right for that moment. What will be right for that moment? And this was what was right. You know, there's Hearing God's word was the foundation of the children of Israel. Hearing is foundational to the law of Israel. And you would hear these words, especially in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, verses 4 to 6, saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And these words that I command you today, you shall keep them in your heart. This is what the Lord commanded the children of Israel, to do what? To constantly hear God. It is foundational Therefore, to the life of everyone calling himself or herself a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, to hear him, Jesus say that my sheep hears my voice and they follow. They know him. Intimate. They know him. They can walk with him. God spoke. The word of the gospel, the wisdom of God, also comes by hearing it. The more you hear the word, the more you grow. You see, Paul also told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 onwards. Say, our gospel came to you not only in words, but also in power, in the Holy Spirit and full of conviction. So when you receive the word of God, which you had from us, you accepted is not because of mere people that we are. You accepted the word of God. There's the word of God that we speak about, the word of God that we read. It has power to transform lives. 
has power to change. It has power to convict sinners. People who have been corrupt, it is only God's word that can change them. No people who just, you know, say, you know, I'm a Christian, buona sifiwe, and there's no fruit. If you say buona sifiwe, then we gotta prove it. Children of God, this is what the Lord requires of us, that we will obey the word of God. Even from James, James chapter one, verses 19 to 21, say, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. God's word which is able to save your souls. So friends, do you have a hearing heart? Can you pay attention? And later on, you know, when we go through the uh, Proverbs, um, Pastor Josh already began, you, you learn a lot of wisdom when uh, Solomon is speaking, a lot of warnings. Say, don't go this way, don't do this, don't entertain this. Why? Because he saw all those things and it was vanity of vanities. Lives are destroyed when we don't listen. Solomon says that Wisdom cries on the streets. He who is wise will find it. You'll find it. And he say, my son, my child, do whatever it takes to find her. To find what? Wisdom. To find a heart that listens to God. You have a heart. But most of the time, it doesn't listen to God. <laughs> you remember what led to the death of Stephen? He preached the gospel to the religious leaders, and he told them that from time past, you have disregarded the Holy Spirit. You have turned your deaf ears to him. And they got mad. Yeah, how, how would you say that we haven't listened to, to God? Say, no, 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 you guys are rebellious. When the Pharisees say they're, they're the sons of Abraham, Jesus said what? No, 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 no. If you were the sons of Abraham, you would have done as Abraham would. But I know your father, <laughs> the devil. You act like him in disobedience whitewashed tombs. <laughs> God wants us to hear him. And as I've said, if you are able to hear him, he can trust you with a lot of things. A lot of things. Sometimes you wonder, well, why does God trust other people more than others? It is simple. There are people who have trained their ears to listen to God more than listening to the noises around them. You listen rightly to God, your marriage will be safe. You listen to God right, your children will walk in the ways of the Lord. You listen to God right, you will not get yourself into relationships that will lead to strife. if you listen to God. His word is available for us.
You know, Solomon's request for a hearing heart was not a request to magically become some kind of insightful human being. But he asked for ears that would listen to the word of God. For a heart that absorbs its specific content and act accordingly. God, this is what you have said, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna lay my feelings aside because my feelings are right now telling you something different. (laughs) The feelings are just feelings. They come and go, come and go, come and go. They're never constant. Today you feel like eating meat, tomorrow you don't want to hear or to, to smell. Today, you're like, oh, I want caramel in my cake. Tomorrow, it's boring. (laughs) We we change things every day. It's, you loved it yesterday, today today it's boring. And that is why we even tell people who want to get married or people who are married, feelings will never sustain marriage or any relationships. Why? Because they come and go. It is commitment and loyalty to the one that you have chosen, period. You wanna hear God? You can read. The fear of the Lord is acknowledging his presence with you, acknowledging that he is with you, that he is speaking to you. That is the beginning of being wise. That is the beginning beginning of being set apart from the others. Your, your, you're thinking in this direction and they think you're weird. If that is being weird, I love it. Because being weird will take me to the presence of God daily. And compromising things so that your friends will not get mad, so that you know the people will be at peace with you. The same people who, who will raise you up. Their hands get tired when they just shift it, you know what is gonna happen? You're gonna hit the ground and you're gonna hit it real hard. <laughs> Maybe the, the, the lifting was you know, gradual, pole pole, until you know, they get you there. They get tired, your coming down will be abrupt. Oh, but I never, I didn't save up for this, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. They leave you there with zero. <laughs> Who would you rather choose to listen to? Listen to God. And all the men who are here, especially those who are married, I pray that you would strive as much as you can to listen to God so that you can lead your family right. If you don't listen to God, you're gonna lead with your earthly wisdom and it's gonna fail you too soon. You see, he, Solomon has been given the reward of a heart that he is. There's a lot of wealth, he's going to enjoy it. You know, there's, you know people will come from the neighboring kingdom bringing things to to honor the king because they have heard of what? Of this wisdom. It has never been heard before. Never been heard before. And the Lord is also saying, I'm gonna give you a little bit more days to live so that you can continue enjoying the wealth that I'm giving you. For he's the same man, actually, 
Solomon who says in Ecclesiastes that it is the Lord who gives you the strength to make wealth and at the same time, he gives you the strength to enjoy it. For there is a possibility of making a lot of wealth and you're not enjoying it. You're getting a lot of money, you put it in your pocket and your pocket is, has a tunnel. <laughs> you get money, it just always goes. So like yesterday I had 19,000. Right now I have like 1,900. <laughs> what happened? You, you can't even trace where it went. The Lord gives you the strength to make it as well as the strength to enjoy it. So as you pray, you, you pray for both of these things. That the Lord, the, the, the fact that you have blessed me, please also help me to enjoy them. You don't want to be found in town, you've fainted and you have three million in your bank account and you, all you eat in town is, you know, bread and milk. <laughs> you can't even take yourself to Acre one time like, no, 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 no. I'm going to give them, like, what money for lunch? These things, they have a tendency of doing what? Growing wings. And they fly. And when they fly, you can be sure they're not just flying. They will land somewhere. <laughs> So land somewhere. So friends, that is all we got from this chapter. The God rewards those who hear him. Would you ask God that he would give you a heart that would hear him in every situation? Not just one, in every situation. Don't, don't be wise in your own mind, in your own ways. Acknowledge God, and he will make your ways straight. Amen? Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have read it, and I pray that our hearts will be tuned to hear you. As we have read, you, you told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy to hear you and to hear you alone, that we should love you with our hearts, with our souls, and with our minds. I pray, O oh God, that we we'll train ourselves to practice your presence in our daily life, to practice that which you have given to us daily, that we will apply this word to our lives. I pray that even the people who will be around us, our colleagues, our family members, they will know for sure that we are your disciples. The way we conduct ourselves, the way we love people, the way we care for one another, and the way we treat one another. So help our hearts, Lord. And as we disperse in fellowship, I pray that your presence will go with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and have a lovely evening.